morning, YouTube. Out for a nice sunny drive this morning. Boy, having the old, wow. <laughs> Boy, having the old infield be my weekend rider takes a little bit of adjusting. So during the week, I'm riding the CTX back and forth to work, which is a six speed, 700 parallel twin, 270 degree firing order. Really nice brakes, really nice acceleration. But more than all that is the, uh, the lower seating riding position and the forward pegs. Anyway, so when I go to put my feet up on this bike, <laughs> uh, I have to remember that they're not so far forward anymore. In some ways this thing feels like riding an old piece of farm equipment, but much more comfortable. I gotta say, the, the big, huge springs on the back of the seat, it, it doesn't seem like they're that comfortable, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's extremely comfortable. Well, so enough of that. You folks are used to seeing me on the infield, and here I am. So, I was catching up on some of my favorite moto vloggers this weekend, and I came across Suffolk Andy. And Suffolk Andy was talking about, well, the topic was to show your face or to not show your face. And he had experienced seeing some motor vlogger meetups where folks had concealed their faces, specifically in the United States, it seemed to be. And he had posed the question, you know, wondering why, and I gave him a lengthy reply, but of course, why not reply in a motor vlog? So. You know, I, I don't I don't have a particular aversion to it. I do a lot of things that um, have me out in the public. For example, my band and uh, my YouTube channel for the band. Of course, I, I'm not hidden in that. I'm, I'm right out front playing the guitar and singing and doing everything else. So, so I'm not particularly adverse to. revealing my face on YouTube. But I do know that some people prefer to have that privacy. And when I was thinking about it, you know, there are a lot of reasons. I mean, there are quite a few moto vloggers, specifically here in the United States, that uh, they do some pretty wild stuff on their bikes. And it's likely that uh, they don't want their identity revealed for fear of uh, law enforcement figuring out who they are. Because, I mean, that's a very real thing. There have been instances where law enforcement has realized who someone was, you know, doing 100 mile an hour wheelies down a busy interstate and uh, they've gone after them and, and then seized their YouTube channel as evidence. So I, I guess it, it's possible that some folks consider that. Um, but you know, it also occurred to me that this, this younger generation, this YouTube thing, they're, they're really tuned into it, you know, and, and for those of us that were around before such things, you know, a, a lot of people in our situation got caught up in throwing things on Facebook and YouTube and things like that without thinking about what the consequences might be. And while there's always the possibility of a stalker, really I'm speaking to, you know, people who blather about every little thing that crosses their mind, whether it's politically correct or not. Um, 
and then later on when they go to apply for a job somewhere you know your LinkedIn and your YouTube and your Facebook those are all open source materials that are searchable and if you're looking to get hired maybe they don't want someone who uh, rides around smoking cigars and giving a, giving all sorts of um, information about themselves over YouTube and discussing all sorts of pointed positions and politics and things like that so it could well be that people like to hide their position there and who they are so that in the future should they get looked at for something it, it can't be directly pinned on them so maybe it's because people are, are savvy that way. It could simply be that people consider themselves brutally ugly. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, yeah, I definitely got the face for radio. Definitely have the face for radio, so I can, I, can, I guess I can understand wanting to conceal your identity that way or for that reason it is actually kind of busy down here for a Sunday in downtown Tucson and Tucson's always been one of those towns that just kind of packs it up on the weekends non-work days even during work days the siesta mentality is still very present in Tucson <laughs> So I just thought that was interesting. Uh, you know, one of the other things I see people do, they blur out other moto vloggers' faces and they blur out other moto vloggers. Hey, look, there's a police officer. Police officer on a motorcycle. How cool is that? See an ambulance coming here. Look like a Kawasaki. Alright, they're not coming this way anymore, folks. They're not hopping that median. So in thinking about that, I see people blur license plates. And they blur each other's faces. So we've kind of covered the faces there. I have not understood why people bother blurring out uh, other people's license plates or their own license plates. Um, for example, whether you're watching me on YouTube or you're riding behind me in traffic, you're, you're going to be able to see my license plate when you're riding around in public. If someone does have the resources that they can look up your license plate number and give it to someone else, well, you know, I suppose if someone has those kind of resources and are going to make the effort, then, uh, then they're probably going to stalk you anyhow, and they'll find another means with which to do that. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Perhaps it's different in UK because I noticed a lot of UK vloggers will block out, I don't know, out of courtesy, uh, will block out even license plates on the, uh, on the vehicles, the registration plates on the vehicles in front of them when they're stopped at a traffic light. So uh, just an interesting thing. I've never quite understood that because here in the United States, I think unless you're involved in law enforcement or you're paying a bunch of fees and by no means does it come in a timely manner if you're say a private investigator you have to pay uh, investigator fees and give a specific reason why you need someone's registration information and uh, then you have to wait like two or three months and not only that but then they also give a notification at least here in Arizona they also give a notification to the driver whose information you're requesting they let them know that someone is requesting their information 
other than law enforcement. So it's not that easy to do. It costs a little bit of money and it takes forever and the person's going to be notified anyway. So again, I'm not exactly sure why it's important to blur those things out. Maybe some of you guys that do that can, can enlighten me if you happen to be watching. And uh, that was more or less all I had to add to Suffolk Andy's vlog on that. And if you guys haven't checked out Suffolk Andy, if you're, if you're one of my subscribers and you just happened upon my, uh, my moto vlog here, well, I'm going to include a link to his channel. Go check him out. It, I got to tell you, out of uh, all the moto vloggers I watch, I watch a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Um, some people are just completely entertaining and compelling. Uh, other people, they have really mad editing skills. Other people have a really sharp wit. And some people make you think. And for me, Suffolk Andy makes me think. I always find myself watching his vlogs and then coming away really sort of thinking about some of the questions he poses or ideas that he introduces. So go ahead and check them out. And thanks for uh, watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. My, I'm on back on with the false neutrals. <laughs> Been off the bike just a little too long.